Today, we'll be talking about Polaris's SAS Code Exclusions feature. We'll show how to set up code exclusions in Polaris, which will help security administrators, development managers, and developers hide issues which are not relevant to their organization and let developers focus on triaging issues which are actual security risks. Let's look at a quick demo of how this works in Polaris itself. I'm going to use the training project folder. It's important to note that this project has 272 issues, one critical, 47 high, and 66 mediums. When we do the code exclusion, we'll see that these numbers are updated. For this demo, I'm going to focus on a particular folder, which means that any issues under that location should be hidden. We'll focus on this data static code fixes folder. If I look at the location, I'll notice that there are 16 issues found in this project for that folder, 15 high and one medium. If I exclude this folder from my project, then I would expect that these 16 issues are no longer found and my total tally of issues, including high and medium will also be updated. So to do this, we go into settings, we go into analysis, and in this case, I'm commented out, but I'm going to edit my code exclusions and uncomment out my exclusion for code fixes, which means that any issues found under any folder in this code exclusions, code fixes will be eliminated. Once I hit save, Polaris will automatically update. While that's happening, I'll point out a few other features. This modified section will allow you to see if you've made changes to this particular project, or if you are inheriting these settings from another location, such as your org level tenant. You can also simply reset, which lets you reset back to the inherited settings. Now let's check on our issues. Polaris is telling you that the code exclusion changes are being applied, which means this might take a few minutes. So for now, you're still seeing the issues from the code fixes folders, but over time, those will disappear. So now to see that I'm filtering off that same folder code fixes and there are no longer issues being found. If I go back to my summary, I should see that my total tally of issues will decrease by 16 from 272 to 256. And I've also decreased my number of high down by 15 to 32 from 47 and my number of medium by one from 66 to 65. If I want to reintroduce those issues back again, I simply have to go back into my settings, go back to my analysis section, and in this case, I'm going to comment out that, that exclusion, which means that Polaris will now reintroduce those code fixes folders and files and any issues found in those folders or files back into the project view. Again, Polaris tells me this might take a few minutes, so I'm going to wait for the change to happen. And if I filter by the code fixes location, I can see that my 16 issues are back again. And if I go to my summary view, I can see that my total issues has gone back up to 272 and my number of high and medium has also updated. So therefore, I've removed the code exclusion and those issues seamlessly reappear back in my project. So with code exclusions, this allows developers to prioritize on the right issues that are most important and provide actual security risks for the organization. It also gives you the flexibility to reintroduce or remove issues without losing any issue metadata along the way. And you can configure it at the tenant level, which means it's inherited down to the project level, or you can customize it down at the project level, which means branches also get it. This is an easy way to help your developers prioritize on the right issues. To learn more about code exclusions or other features, please visit www.blockduck.com slash Polaris to learn more.